Phantom 2040. This high-quality cartoon from the 90s is punishably underrated. Cartoon exploration. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry and this is Marvelous Videos. Without fail, we always come back to discussing 90s cartoons, arguably the golden age of cartoons before things went somewhat downhill. The 90s had some hard-hitting action cartoons while the superhero genre still reigned supreme. One such animated series was called Phantom 2040. The series was another comic-to-TV adaptation because it was partially inspired by Lee Falk's comic strip superhero, The Phantom. The 24th Phantom is regarded to be the series' main character. The future has no room for you! Fire! From September 18th, 1994 to March the 3rd, 1996, the show was broadcast on the syndication channel and the series still has loyal fans to this day, despite having been cancelled prematurely. The series is now classed as a cult classic due to its dark tones, themes and ideas, and if you were a 90s baby, this one is worth a watch. Do any of you remember this show? Let's take you down memory lane. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. What was the series all about? Lee Falk, a cartoonist, developed The Phantom in 1936. Yes, superhero nerds, this was a superhero-style crime fighter who existed before Batman and Superman. The Phantom is a hero who guards his nation against piracy and injustice in every form in the imaginary African nation of Bangala's forests. He appeared to have lived for about 500 years, leading Bangala's residents to refer to him as the Ghost Who Walks and assume his immortality. The Phantom is actually Kit Walker, who is a direct descendant of a small child who was aboard a freight ship with his father when it was attacked by pirates in the 1500s. His father was slain, but the boy lived after being cast overboard and eventually washing up on Bangala's shores. He was nurtured by the native tribespeople of the country there after being restored to health. After receiving training over the ensuing years, he took an oath on the murder victim's skull, promising to battle evil and promising that his sons and their sons will continue in his footsteps. The Phantom 2040 focused on young college student Kit Walker Jr even though most of the characters' escapades in comic books, TV serials, and a full-length feature starring Billy Zane in 1996 followed the antics of the 21st Phantom. Executive story editors Judith and Garfield Reeve Stevens and executive producer David J. Corbett worked together to create the show for television. Reeve Stevens created the writer's bible for the program, story edited both seasons, and scripted a number of episodes, including the two-part opener entitled Generation Unto Generation. Bryn Chandler and Michael Reeves were among the show's other other important writers. Peter Chung, the man behind the creation of Eon Flux, was the one who created the unique character designs for the show. Acquired ah! The program received excellent reviews when it aired in 1994, but it only ran for 35 episodes before being reduced to weekend repeats in 1996. Along with action scenes, the stories emphasize clever storytelling and character development, garnering praise for the show's subtle instilling of ideals like individuality, freedom, and the brittle nature of humanity. Stu Rosen's voice direction on Phantom 2040 had a profound influence on animated adventure television. Rosen used skilled theatrical actors in their productions, and their show's vocal performances set the bar for all subsequent TV animation by adding a new degree of maturity and depth. The story takes place in the year 2040, when the fragile ecological balance of an Earth that was once teeming with life has been completely destroyed by natural catastrophes and the economic resource wars from the early 21st century. The affluent and rich continue to prosper everywhere, living in pricey housing developments that tower over the disadvantaged people. The unfortunate people of Earth have been forced to live off of trash from the past on the decrepit streets of abandoned city-states. The dominant robotics manufacturing company Maximum Inc. has gradually constructed a cold, steely urban core in Metropia, formerly known as New York City the biggest and most influential of the city-states, consisting of enormous residential buildings entwined with tube train tubes. Massive amounts of human labor have been replaced by robotic biots, biological optical transputer systems, from Maximum, and the company is secretly creating illegal combat biots to serve as Maximum's own underground army. Maximum has its own future.
future goals under the pretext of effective advancement, all of which are referred to as the Maximum Era. Their designs all eventually involve the destructive path of decline and annihilation as the culmination of man's prior mistakes and efforts, once Earth finally succumbs to its slowly deteriorating state through the construction of Cyberville, an enormous survival shelter where only the richest and most privileged humans will retreat. The Ghost Jungle, a vast area of altered vegetation that may hold the key to saving the planet, is the only chance for humanity's survival. Most people are unaware of this hidden life-giving source that lies buried beneath Metropia. Kit Walker Jr., a college student, is selected by fate to save the world while clad in the purple costume and black mask of the 24th Phantom, the hero of his people. Ironically, Kit's father vanished 16 years previously in a toxic waste accident in a Metropia subway station, which led to the growth of this rainforest. The Phantom must battle to stop megacorporation Maximum Inc. from developing a scheme to exterminate the bulk of the Earth's population, save for its most wealthy residents, with the help of his father's erstwhile partner Guran, his great aunt Heloise, and a host of other allies. Here, a new hero prepares for action. Exploring the first few episodes and the overall story arc. Set in the dystopian background that we've already mentioned, the storyline progresses in a fast-paced manner. In the first episode, Kit Walker Jr., a student at Metropia University, runs into Guran, an old friend of his father's, who tells him about his ancestry and urges him to take up the role of the Phantom. There is a deep dive into the Phantom's history in this episode, setting the stage for the series overall. The background is succinctly explained and the viewer understands the urgent need for a hero to take up the mantle. And who does doesn't love a young hero learning the ropes. I mean, just look at the popularity Tom Holland's Spider-Man enjoys today. We witness Kit perform his first valiant deed as the Phantom in the second episode. This episode marks the beginning of his heroics. In this episode, he must prevent Maximum Inc. from indoctrinating young people into rioting with the use of a virtual reality game. The big bad is shown in this episode, and the viewer is introduced to the kind of evil existing in this technological, dark, post-apocalyptic society. However, with a good versus evil dynamic, we root for the good guy, and he comes out on top. This is also a running theme in the series. In the third episode, Maxwell Madison Jr., a psychopathic villain and the heir to Maximum Inc., develops the first stable Fractal Biot, a shape-shifting automaton who is given instructions by Maximum to pose as the Phantom and thus put him to blame for a string of armed robberies. This episode gives us an insight into the kind of plots the villains would hatch and the lengths they would go to to take down the Phantom. One of Kit's teachers, Jack Archer, learns Kit's real identity in the meantime and thus he also faces typical masked heroism issues such as the disclosure and secrecy of his identity. In the fourth episode, we see the head of Maximum Inc. Rebecca Madison's intended fortress Cyberville projected in virtual reality. The Phantom and Guran break into the simulation in order to stop whatever evil plan she was plotting. Unbeknownst to them, Hubert Graft had simultaneously discovered a technique to trace their virtual signal in order to locate the Skull Lair. Graft confuses Sparks, an orphan young cybersurfer, for the Phantom after he manages to access Maximum's network. Sparks is rescued by the Phantom and from then on becomes an integral member of the series, being at the Phantom's side during times of distress. The fifth episode introduces us to Vain Gloria, a trained starlet vocalist for Maximum who uses her hypnotic mirrors to corrupt the children of city council members in an effort by Rebecca Madison to rig the Cyberville election. A romantic angle is introduced into the series here as we see Kit and his love interest in Forza Sagan Cruz are compelled to end their date early when the Phantom intervenes to thwart Maximum's scheme. The the first five episodes of the show paint a clear picture of the progression of the series in its entirety. They introduce some of the central villains along with their evil schemes, along with the technological aspect of the show, as part and parcel of being set in a post-apocalyptic scenario. Kit the hero and his closest allies are introduced and their dynamics are unraveled. This is where the show really shines, in its writing and story development as the characters, both good and bad, are fleshed out and portrayed in a complex manner. The larger theme of saving the world and making it fair for all, with Kit being a hero of the masses is injected thoroughly throughout the first five episodes. The show is not one where every new episode focuses on a whole new storyline. The story is consistent and keeps building in a linear progression as the plot develops with every episode. All in all, the episodes are worth watching, binge watching if that suits you, and are thoroughly entertaining. 
Phantom 2040 has also spawned a wonderful video game. Hearst Entertainment created an action-adventure platform game which Viacom New Media released in 1995 for the Genesis, Super NES and Game Gear. Despite not closely following the plot of the animated series, the game is directly based on it. Most of the action in the game is side-scrolling. Players have a direct decision to make regarding their course of action several times throughout the narrative. Over 20 alternative endings are possible as a result of the player's many diverse options. Exploration is a key theme in Phantom 2040. Each region has optional areas with repair kits or weapon upgrades and it's up to the player to find the objective or leave. The primary plot of Phantom 2040, which centers on the Phantom's mission to prevent Maximum Inc. from gaining control of Metropia, takes elements from several episodes of the television show even though the backstory of the video game and the television show aren't identical. Numerous threats to Metropia are the central point of the game's plot. The fabled Black Panther, the last of its kind, not to be confused with the Marvel character, is sort after by Rebecca Madison so that she might use its blood in an infusion to encase her late husband's recorded brainwaves inside a living being. The resurrected Maxwell Madison Sr. will make Maximum unstoppable. The Black Panther, however, has been kidnapped by a notorious smuggler by the name of Tracker, and both Maximum and the Phantom will stop at nothing to free it. The Phantom is the first to succeed, but must choose between keeping the Panther safe in the ghost jungle and giving it to the dubious information broker Mr. Cairo in exchange for information regarding Professor Archer's whereabouts who has been abducted by Maximum. Maximum is also stealthily collecting rare photosynthetic plants from the ghost jungle for use in particle laser technologies. Under the guise of defending the political summit which will shortly convene in Metropia, Rebecca Madison is actually building a massive battleship with the intention of destroying the summit before it can outlaw fighting biots of any type. The Phantom succeeds in alerting the summit and destroying the battleship Prometheus, but more plant shipments are being delivered to Sean One, a terrorist and the colony commander in orbit who will stop at nothing to win his people's independence. There are other additional threats to deal with while trying to stop Sean One's lethal particle beam weapon and Rebecca's usage of the Panther to restore her husband's brainwaves. The Super NES version received a 6.875 out of 10 rating from Electronic Gaming Monthly. Though they questioned the game's frequent spawning of robot adversaries and its lack of innovation, three of their four reviewers gave the game an overall favorable rating. They also thought the game's cinematics and non-linear quests were excellent and said that the graphics were were quite nice overall. All in all, a good game for those who like to pick their own endings. Ask your partner. My partner? <laughs> Looking back at some of the memorable characters from the cartoon series. In addition to Mark Hamill, Debbie Harry, Rob Paulson and Paul Williams, the Phantom 2040 voice cast also included Richard Lynch, J.D. Hall, Jeff Bennett, Margot Kidder, Alan Oppenheimer, Scott Valentine, Ron Perlman and Leah Remini. The 24th Phantom, Kit Walker Jr. is the titular character. In contrast to his forebears, Kit was not prepared for the role. He was just a little child when his father mysteriously passed away and as a result, he never learned anything about about his ancestry. On his 18th birthday, Guran reveals to him his family history and tells him all about the Phantom. At first, Kit doesn't believe him, but he gradually takes on the role. His gear consists of visual camouflage for invisibility, an analytical wristband with a sophisticated computer, and an electrified inductance rope. His fleet of vehicles includes a quick hypercycle that can fly, a cruiser that can hold many passengers, and an updated 1999 Mustang dubbed Hero after the 21st Phantom's horse. Guran, Kit's men Mentor is yet another crucial figure. Guran's ancestors have supported the Phantom for many years. Guran, along with Jack Archer, coaches the Phantom in battle, morals, and life in general. He is frequently seen imparting wisdom to Kit and others through the use of ancient jungle sayings. Guran, who held himself responsible for the death of the 23rd Phantom, transformed into the fabled Shadow Panther before Kit Walker Jr. set him free from his sorrow for good. Kit was not just a secluded hero. He had some family along with a love interest in the show which humanized him. Sagan Cruz, a Metropian policewoman known as an enforcer, is drawn to Kit in the series but initially has no idea of his true identity and has doubts about the Phantom's intentions. Later she discovers his secret and Kit eventually chooses her as his partner and love interest. She wears a heavily armoured enforcer suit during combat and possesses a genetically modified police dog named DVL. Heloise is another important character as far as Kit's personal life is concerned. Heloise is the child of the 21st Phantom, the sister of the 22nd Phantom, the aunt of 
the 23rd Phantom and thus the great aunt of Kit Walker Jr., the 24th Phantom. She is also the only living relative of Kit. She hid the truth from Kit in the hopes that he would be able to live a regular life, but she embraces his decision to become the 24th Phantom and works with him to thwart Maximum Inc. Jack Archer is another recurring character. He is a scientist who teaches biology at Kit's college. After Kit assumes the persona of the Phantom, Archer quickly realizes that they are one and the same and joins the select group of people who are aware of the Phantom's true identity. In particular, for the scientific and modern components of Kit's education, Guran and Archer assume the role of his mentors. Later, as a result of his desire to serve society like Kit, he establishes a modest detective service, just like his ancestors. Alan Oppenheimer provided his voice. A young orphan cyber surfer named Sparks is saved by Kit when Maximum mistakenly believes that Sparks is the Phantom. Sparks then becomes a mainstay in the show and helps with the technological aspects of the Phantom's projects and is unofficially accepted into the Phantom's then. When he was three years old, Esteban and Mara, his parents, were abducted by Maximum and mercilessly exploited as the brain matter for Cyberville's security system, Project Gauntlet, a biomechanical living building. Coming to the bad guys, the series' antagonist is Rebecca Madison, the head of Maximum Inc. and the widow of Maxwell Madison Sr., who murdered the 23rd Phantom. Rebecca's underground biot army will ensure that the Earth starts to deteriorate fairly soon, and Rebecca plans to build Cyberville, a technologically advanced and impenetrable fortress where the rich and powerful may seek refuge. However, the Phantom frequently thwarts Rebecca's plans for dominance. Despite her malevolent tendencies, she does have some good traits though, including Kit's suggestion that she's a very lonely woman and also her desire to ensure that her son is safe before fleeing an attack. Graft and her son, Maxwell Madison Jr., are the only people employed at Maximum because all work is done by the company's own biots. She is eventually apprehended and imprisoned once all of her misdeeds are made public. Continuing on with the Madison family, the psychopathic son of Rebecca is none other than Maxwell Madison Jr. He's intelligent, but he appears uninterested in practically everything due to his laziness. When he does have an opinion, he disguises it as coming from Charles Baudelaire, his cat. The death of his father at such a young age is the cause of his psychological disturbance. His lone and most reliable buddy is his cat, who may be the last tangible member of his family's affection for him. Finally, once Rebecca is taken into custody, he and his cat are both sent to a mental hospital, or as Cruz described it, a padded prison. Maxwell had a shape-shifting fractal biot named Heisenberg, after the German physicist Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg was created by Maxwell using nanites produced by Sean One, another villain in space. The first stable fractal organism made by Maximum was Heisenberg. Heisenberg is controlled by Maxwell. Maxwell using a separate remote brain that needs to be carried about in a case. Rounding out the Madison family, we have Rebecca's late husband, Maxwell Madison Sr., who died in the same toxic train crash as the 23rd Phantom. In order to successfully revive Maxwell Madison Sr., Rebecca records his brain waves, stores them in a sizable computer, and is continually looking for a reliable technique to transfer them into a biot, or preferably, a living body. When he was alive and in charge of Maximum Inc., he was viewed as a highly dangerous and power-hungry guy, but it's now known that his intentions for the world were actually very ecologically beneficial and that his opportunistic wife Rebecca ruined his ideas in favor of greedy, selfish global dominance. Another villainous character, chief of security and primary enforcer for Rebecca Madison, Hubert Graft, is a cyborg. Before turning against Maximum to save the Amazon jungle, he was an environmentalist. During the battle, he lost his entire body below the shoulders. By employing biot components to reconstruct Graft's body, Maximum gave Rebecca Madison ultimate control over Graft's Graft's life. The urban combat biot walker, a 10-foot steel exoskeleton armed with lasers and claws, is the most popular robotic system over which Graft has complete control. Graft's biot torso may be detached, a painful operation, at the hip, and merged with other robotic systems. He will cooperate with the Phantom if a greater threat affects nature, due to the fact that he still wants to preserve it. The Phantom approaches him several times and again asks whether he would like to leave Maximum's control, but he always declines. In addition, he opposes hurting kids, even if they break into a valuable company facility and destroy its technology. He's described in the final scene as having been transferred to a halfway house after Maximum Inc. is defeated. Some other notable villains include Dr. Jack, a sarcastic, sensationalistic TV journalist who paints a poor picture of the Phantom's operations. Mr. Cairo is a mystery information broker who deals with both Maximum Inc. and the Phantom and only shows up in holographic transmissions. He learns the Phantom's real identity early on, but despite the massive reward being offered, he decides to keep it from Rebecca Madison. Sean One, the first person to be born in space and the founder and main figure of the Free Orbital Movement, wants his orbital colonies to be independent. He is an arrogant, unusually tall man who uses espionage and terrorist activities to further his goals.
goals. And to round up the villains we have Gorda, who has an army of powerful red-tinted biots that are at her command. She is an Australian criminal boss and smuggler, who is enormously large and unable to walk on her own. Lastly, one of the most intriguing characters of the series, popular starlet vocalist Vaingloria was coached by Maximum Inc. to brainwash the populace. It's reported that Rebecca Madison found her living on the streets and persuaded her to work for Maximum in exchange for food, lodging and fame. In order to thoroughly brainwash some individuals, Rebecca had her fitted with retractable mirrors that could focus light so intensely that staring at them overwhelmed the senses. This effectively hypnotized the public into worshipping her. Vaingloria grudgingly participated in a few of the evil plans hatched at Maximum. Your location. Ah, I'm getting tired of this. Marvelous Verdict, an underrated gem that disappeared too soon. Honestly, this series is a shamefully underappreciated work of late era cyberpunk fiction. Cyberpunk has always addressed the concept of high tech stroke low life as a subgenre of science fiction, as technological developments only serve to widen social gaps and have a demonstrably detrimental impact on the environment. Virtual reality can offer a haven from a cruel and merciless world to those who can afford it. A gift and a curse, cybernetic body alteration can be both. Characters in these novels are frequently compelled to reflect on their own reality and humanity, coming to the conclusion that there are no definitive answers. Fritz Lang's Metropolis and European graphic novelists like Mobius are both sources of inspiration for Phantom 2040. The show is given a retro-futuristic edge by the buildings, cars and other technologies that have more fluid and curved shapes while paying homage to post-war 1940s. This gives the show all the key elements of cyberpunk while doing so in a much more visually inventive way. The show imagines a world in which the wealth gap between the wealthy and the poor will continue to grow. Large city-states will be ruled by the few mega-corporations that managed to survive the resource wars, in which those corporations waged war with one another in order to dominate the planet's meager natural resources. There was no political ruse to disguise the true motivation behind this fight. There was only a blatant, unrepentant determination to seize control of whatever resources were still on Earth that could be stockpiled and sold by and for the top 1%. Through the constantly blurring of lines between mankind and technology, Phantom 2040 makes a conscious effort to delve further into the concepts of identity, self-awareness and purpose during its two-season run. Over the course of 35 episodes, resonant concepts about the fusion of the human mind and technology provided a wealth of opportunities to convey a range of stories. Guys, your image can never be clearly recorded. Its multiplied light field blurs all artificial vision systems. The thoughts of three different people are connected to form a collective consciousness in the episode 3 into 1, giving them surprising abilities. Sparks, the Phantom's youngest ally, learns in the gauntlet the harsh reality about the parents he'd always believed had abandoned him. At a young age, they were taken by Maximum Inc. and subjected to experiments to determine whether their combined consciousness could be incorporated into Cyberville's security system. Both times, the people involved are put to death, in the gauntlet at least, to put an end to their suffering, not only out of concern for the possible threats they might pose. Phantom 2040 took the time to examine not only these profoundly philosophical concepts, but also the political and ethical ramifications of corporate supremacy in all spheres of life. Police are susceptible to corruption. Pop artists are virtually held captive by the cybernetic modifications that mega corporations have given them, and they are compelled to use subliminal messages in their performances. These same mega corporations offer college athlete scholarships and even inject them with experimental nanotechnology to boost their performance. Even space colonies in orbit must rely on corporate funding. While its story definitely is a major highlight, other things such as cast, voice acting, action sequences and animation were also done pretty well. The voice cast for the characters is excellent, and they are well developed on both sides of the good versus evil premise. Additionally, they humanize the antagonists and demonstrate that the struggle between good and evil isn't a binary one. The animation is excellent, it has a fluid style and captures well the series' futuristic setting. The period is both technologically sophisticated and grim and brutal, thus giving the program a neo-noir vibe. There are many excellent firefights which add to the action's greatness and well-choreographed nature. Even though it's by no means exceptional, it's still amazing to look back specifically on Phantom 2040, an animated series created for kids in North America, and realize how many significant concerns it raised, questions that sadly we still have today. Even without the serious themes and issues that the show delved into, it was still a pleasurable watch with the amazing animation and constant action, although an older viewer might be able to appreciate the show more. The Phantom, a 1996 motion picture starring Billy Zane as the Phantom and Kit Walker, was released in the same year as the cartoon was cancelled. Not a lot of people remember this show now, but we would definitely recommend it as a must-watch if you're a fan of 90s cartoons. Do you remember?
remember this show? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. The future has no room for you. Fire!